So with the iPhone 16 series releasing sometime in September, I figured today would be a perfect time to rank every single iPhone that released from 2007 all the way up until 2023 with the release of the iPhone 15. Now, of course, the iPhone 16 isn't gonna be on this list, but rest assured, that I am gonna be doing a review on it. So make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on if you guys wanna see that. But without further ado, let's kick things off with the iPhone 2G aka the original iPhone. When Steve Jobs first introduced the iPhone, it was an internet communicator, a phone, and an iPod, combined all into one device, which is sandwiched into an iPhone. If you look back at that keynote, things were much more simpler. We had pinch to zoom, we could be able to flick through our contacts, we can browse through Safari, simpler tasks, which was mind blowing at the time. Now it wasn't perfect. It was missing things like 3G. The aluminum on the back was very easy to scratch and it has a recessed headphone jack so you can't plug in any whole headphones in here. And of course we didn't have the app store at the time which was gonna come later on. So the original iPhone was definitely special back in 2007 for sure, but I am gonna rate it A tier. And that brings us to 2008 with the iPhone 3G. This is bringing 3G to the iPhone for the very first time, dramatically increasing the speed compared to the 2G edge network that we had. It featured a redesigned chassis, bringing that plastic design, which I wasn't a fan of at all, more prone to micro scratches. Now the camera on the 3GS also has been improved. Flush headphone jacks, you can use any headphones you like. But other than that, the 3G was pretty simple on paper, but it brought that well-needed 3G connectivity. But me personally, I'm gonna rank this B tier. It's not as special as the original iPhone, but it's just taking it and making it better while maybe cutting back on the price. Cause the 3GS would sell for just $199. And back in the days, you had to sign up for a two year contract, but that was way more affordable compared to the $499 for the original iPhone. And that brings us to the iPhone 3GS. Now this is the first ever S model iPhone and the S stands for speed and just hence the name. It just brings speed improvements to the iPhone 3G. And the iPhone 3GS was the first iPhone to have longer support of iOS. So it started off with iOS or iPhone OS 3.0 and it lasted all the way up until iOS 6.1.6. .6. We had a bump up to the megapixel, going from two megapixel to three megapixel. We have autofocus, auto white balance. So it brought well needed changes to the camera. So yeah, so it was a rock solid iPhone. And I'm gonna give it a tier just thanks to the software support and the cameras being a little bit more better. It was a better iPhone 3G. So that was in 2009. Fast forward to 2010, we have the iPhone 4. And I still have my iPhone 4 to this day. And let me tell you something, this, was a this is an iconic design and a very special time in 2010. This is when the iPhone became the iPhone. I mean, we had the front face and FaceTime camera. We had that Retina HD display. We had the stainless steel frame, just an entire redesign of the iPhone. It was one of those times where you just had to be there. Of course, we had the first ever Apple Silicon here. So it had the A4 chip. And I just remember being as a kid, I always wanted an iPhone. I was stuck with one of those cheap flimsy phones or I think I had a sidekick around this time too as well. But there was one major problem with it. The way how you hold your phone, you start losing signal. So imagine you holding your phone regular and you start losing signal, you're dropping calls, you can't send text messages. Around this time, this was the age of social media, being social media, Instagram was coming up, we had Twitter already here, Facebook. Steve Jobs came out with a response. You're holding your phone wrong. And they released some free bumper cases for your phone to neglect the antenna gate. And it was a weird time. And I think that aspect alone, I have to drop it down to A tier and that is where 2011, we had the iPhone 4S. Now, unfortunately, I sold my 4S at the, you know, at the time, I needed the cash, and I regret selling it to this day, but the iPhone 4S, it brought major improvements. We had the A5 chip, we have a 1080p rare camera, and also we have Siri for the very first time that we all know and love. Now we have Apple intelligence. And the 4S in general was my first ever iPhone that I officially activated. Uh, via Sprint because around that time you had to sign up with AT&T 
to use an iPhone, but it was up until the 4S where you can activate it with T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, of course, and Verizon. So the 4S was a very special time. And of course, the A5 chip was definitely holding its ground. It saw so many software updates throughout the years. It was unbelievable to the point where why is Apple still supporting the 4S? Started off with iOS 5 and it lasted all the way to iOS 9. iOS 9. That is, that is bananas. Definitely one of the, my favorite iPhones of all time. And this is gonna bring it to S tier. Now that brings me to next year with the iPhone 5. Now, unfortunately, this is when Steve Jobs was in critical condition and it was a sad time, but Steve Jobs ended off with a bang with the iPhone 5, bringing a redesign, making the screen bigger, bringing it up from 3.5 to four inches. And also for the very first time, we have LTE connectivity, which we still use it to this day. I love LTE. And also you have this beautiful design. I argue that the iPhone 5 was one of the most beautiful, well-made design iPhones. Love the two-tone, the aluminum back with the glass. And they also relocated the headphone jack to the bottom. So the cable's not in the way of the screen. It was a well thought out design. And unfortunately, as a teenager, I was still stuck with the 4S. I didn't have the iPhone 5, but when I saw it in the store, I was like, I need this, I need this. But I couldn't get it because I was in a two year contract with Sprint. But anyway, fast forward to 2013, Apple did it again. I mean, they did it again with the iPhone 5S and this is the first ever iPhone to feature a 64 bit architecture with the A7 chip. Now I know that's that's nerd talk, that's mumbo jumbo, but it was a big deal. It's bringing desktop class performance to an iPhone. And of course we have Touch ID for the very first time. So it changed the way how we unlock our iPhones, introducing gold for the first time. The iPhone 5 series was just rock solid. I mean, they did their thing with that one. But now we have the iPhone 5C for the first time ever. We had two new iPhones and the 5C is just taking the iPhone 5 and repackaging it into a different material. So instead of the aluminum and the glass back, we have a polycarbonate, AKA plastic, and it feature various different vibrant colors. And the iPhone 5C was a bit of a weird one because why would you wanna buy an iPhone 5C when you can buy an iPhone 5? Because essentially it's the same exact guts as an iPhone 5, but just at a cheaper material. So why would you wanna get the cheaper material iPhone 5 when you could get the OG iPhone 5, C tier? Next up, 2014, we have the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. Now, this is the first ever iPhone to feature a 4.7 inch display and a 5.5 inch display. Now, these are the best selling iPhones of all time. People always wanted a bigger iPhone, but looking at the actual design of the iPhone 6, I wasn't a fan of at all. The antenna lines look unattractive to me. We had the first protrusion on the rear camera and to put the ice on the cake, you can bend the iPhone 6 very easily due to its lighter aluminum material. Uh, shout out to Unbox Therapy. That's the most viewed tech video on YouTube. But once you get past the display, the novelty just basically wore off. I'm giving it D tier. Now the year after that, 2015, this is my year of college. I just remember this, the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. I remember sitting down in math class, watching the keynote, and I was like, oh, we got rose gold color. And just like any S model, it just takes already what's there and make it better. So 3D touch, faster performance, and stronger material. And it was the first iPhone to record 4K video. And also you have the faster touch ID 2.0, where if you just touch the home button, your phone automatically unlocks. It was too fast. C tier. A year after that, 2016, we have the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. Now, this is still taking that same iPhone 6 design, making it a little bit cleaner, removing one portion of the antenna band and wrapping it around the top. This is a more pleasant design, I would say, and especially Apple introduced Jet Black and Matte Black for the very first time. This was the first iPhone to feature an IP rating, so it's dust and water resistance. And also you have a capacitive home button, so this is gonna help 
with the longevity of the home button. And of course you have upgrades to the camera. The 7 Plus features that telephoto lens and the main camera lens. And of course we have the infamous removal of the headphone jack and replacement of the wireless AirPods. So I'm gonna give the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus C tier. Now, 2017 was a very special year. This was the year where we wanna see the biggest iPhone change. I mean, we've been seeing the same thing since the original iPhone, the same home button. Yes, they're getting bigger, the cameras are getting better, but this was the year where we need to see something new. And with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, they didn't deliver. It's the same iPhone 7 design, but bringing in wireless charging. You have this fresh new gold color. You have the A11 chip bringing in that performance. Of course, camera upgrades is also present here too as well. But this was something that, oh my God, what is Apple doing? We have the same exact iPhone. But the one more thing moment, the same exact keynote Apple introduced the iPhone 10. We've been waiting for this iPhone and Apple delivered. This is bringing a radical design to the iPhone, going away of the home button, bringing in the swipe gestures. We had face ID instead of touch ID. Of course, we had the stainless steel glossy finish. Of course, we have the glass back for wireless charge. It definitely revolutionized the iPhone, the way how we use it. The iPhone 10 left a significant impact that it changed the standards of smartphones today. I mean, this was the first iPhone that cost $1,000. Easily, the iPhone 10 is S tier. It's nothing wrong with the iPhone 10 at all. It just takes the iPhone to a whole nother level with Memoji and emojis, OLED display. I didn't even talk about the OLED. Yes, S tier for the iPhone 10. And I forgot to mention the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8, I'm giving it D tier. The iPhone 10 definitely outshined the iPhone 8. And that brings us into 2018. How can Apple upgrade the iPhone 10? You guessed it, the iPhone 10s and the 10s Max. Now this is the first iPhone to introduce a Max model, bringing a larger 6.4 inch size even larger than the plus model, bringing that size from 5.8 to 6.4, bringing it the largest iPhone at the time. And that was it. <laughs> the iPhone XS was just all about the max model. Of course, we had the A12 Bionic chip. You had that beautiful gold color, but don't let the color fool you. It's still an iPhone 10. Oh, I mean, iPhone XS. Easily, this is going down to D tier in my opinion. Now that same keynote, Apple introduced the iPhone XR. Now, this was a very important iPhone of that year because, well, it was the best selling iPhone that year. And it brings the iPhone 10, but at a more affordable price tag. So very similar to the iPhone 5C, it's kind of not like the iPhone 5C because it still brings flagship performance. It brings um, incredible cameras, and you also have all your colors present. This is for somebody who wanted that iPhone 10, but without spending that $1,000 price tag, coming in at $749. And this was, it's not the most affordable, but it was way cheaper than $1,000. And yes, these things flew out the shelves, and this was the first time when Apple started to allow trade-ins. So yes, this was a very successful iPhone. I'll give the iPhone 10 RB. You know, you really do notice that that lower resolution screen. I'm just gonna be nitpicking like that. The thicker bezels, the singular lens camera, it's little things like that that I definitely noticed, but it's still a good iPhone, B tier. 2019 was a very special time for the iPhone. We have the regular iPhone 11 where it takes the iPhone 10R, includes an ultra wide, introduce some new colors, and they lower down the price point. So the 10R costs 750, the iPhone 11 costs $699, and yeah, it's a better iPhone and it's cheaper. Do the math yourself. And it doesn't even stop there. You have the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, making it the first ever Pro iPhone. You have a wide camera lens, you have an ultra wide, and you have a telephoto lens. You have the frosted glass pack material. This was a time when people couldn't tell the difference between a DSLR camera versus an iPhone. But what made the iPhone 11 series so special and especially the Pro Max model, the battery life. 
the battery life was absolutely incredible. You have night mode to all the iPhone 11 series, so you could take those night shots. I mean, going from the iPhone 10s to the iPhone 11 was definitely a worthy upgrade in my book, especially the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm gonna give the regular iPhone 11 A tier and S tier to the 11 Pro and Pro Max. And also with the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max, it included a fast charger in the box alongside some wired headphones. So this will be the last year that we'll see that. Unfortunately, that transition to 2020 with the iPhone 12. It was a weird year. We didn't have the no charging brick in the box. For the first time ever, we also got the iPhone 12 mini, which I still have a 13 mini. <laughs> this is a 13 mini. But to this day, I love the iPhone mini series. Hopefully Apple will bring it back. And also they, they made the iPhones more boxier, so it's more easier to hold in your hand. Some people didn't like it, some people loved it. We have 5G, we have the introduction of Apple Pro Raw, where you could take raw photos. But for the most part, it just definitely wasn't my favorite iPhone. I mean, the entire iPhone 12 series, I'm gonna give it B tier. The iPhone 13 now, it brought Apple right back on track. I mean, they increased the milliamp battery, so the battery has been significantly improved. We have the macro photography, we have Apple ProRes, we have cinematic mode, we have a smaller notch, we have ProMotion uh, 120 hertz display, we have this beautiful Sierra blue color. And with that being said, the 13 Pro and Pro Max, I'm giving it S tier. And in terms of the regular iPhone 13 and 13 mini, it didn't really bring that much improvements. Yes, we still have the cinematic mode. We have that smaller notch. And of course we have the massive battery grains. Yeah, the iPhone 13 was a more simpler upgrade. I'm gonna give the iPhone 13 and 13 mini an A tier. Now in terms of the iPhone 14 series in 2022, this was an interesting one because we had all the leaks of rumors saying Apple is gonna have a hole punch. Oh, this looks ugly. Oh, it's gonna have a pill-shaped design. But when we saw Apple officially announce the 14 Pro, it looked amazing. That dynamic island just interacts on whatever app that you're using or a live activity. It was just genius. And the animation just looks silky smooth. Um, and it was just something that whoever had a notch iPhone automatically felt like they need to upgrade. This is the first time ever we get in a 48 megapixel camera on the iPhone. The battery life was significantly worse on the iPhone 14 Pro series, like, or even the entire lineup for that matter. Just the battery degradation was terrible. And with that being said, I'm actually gonna give the 14 Pro B tier. But in terms of the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, I'm giving that one D tier. I mean, same exact notch, same exact display. It was, it's like a copy and paste, but just a fresh coat of colors. Um, yes, you have crash detection, you have SOS satellite, but that was about it, man. I mean, the regular 14 and 14 plus was pretty bare bones to say the least. I guess the only selling point really is the 14 plus, the bigger iPhone. Now that leads me into the iPhone 15 series. Now I wanna start things off with the regular models, the 15 and the 15 plus. This was a dramatic upgrade compared to the 14. So now you're getting Dynamic Island for the first time, although it's still 60 Hertz, so the animation isn't gonna look as smooth. You get in that 48 megapixel camera, which is pretty, pretty good. You even get in that frosted glass back material, which was surprising to see. It was just, it was an upgrade that we should have saw on the 14 and the 14 plus but it would have cannibalized the 14 Pro sales. And most importantly, you have USB Type-C. It doesn't get no better than that. Going away of lightning on with USB Type-C. But in terms of the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, you have that titanium finish. You have USB Type-C like I mentioned earlier, but it's a more faster data transfer with the Pro models. Of course, you have S-Log recording, which is a big deal in the videography scene. And I love how light my phone feels thanks to that material. Corners are a little bit more smoothing out. Easily S tier, it was, it's definitely, I don't have no complaints with the 15 Pro and Pro Max. Away from it getting hot to the touch, it's still a fantastic iPhone, I would say. And one thing I noticed <laughs> throughout this whole entire video, I have not mentioned the iPhone SE series. Now, I'm gonna just quickly breeze through this. The iPhone SE that came out in 2016, I'm giving that B tier. It took the same exact chassis of the iPhone 5S 
and just put in the guts of the iPhone 6S. But throughout time, the SE has gotten worse in 2020 with the SE 2. So essentially taking the iPhone 8's design and put it in a chip of the iPhone 11. For 2020, having a home button was pretty bizarre to say. And then it didn't even stop there. Apple introduced the SE 3 and it took the same exact iPhone 8 or the same exact design as the iPhone SE 2 and just put in a new chip and incorporate 5G. Yeah, the battery life was horrible. There's no night mode. It's a very basic iPhone if you, and there you guys have it. That is me ranking every single iPhone that released from 2007 with the original iPhone all the way up until the iPhone 15 in 2023. And of course we have the iPhone 16 set to release next month. But let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. If you watch the video all the way through, make sure you guys put in this emoji just to let me know you watch it all the way through and make sure you guys subscribe with notifications on, drop a like on this video, help me out tremendously. And other than that, I hope you all have a simple day. Peace.